Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Digging Deeper video. This is my second week of a five week series where we'll be taking a look at some themes surrounding our universe and Earth. Uh, getting into the fray of arguments that are presented by the scientific community at large. Last week, we took a look at the Big Bang Theory, or story as we called it, and we saw where it clashes with the biblical account of creation and how the two don't really line up. Then we also looked at one of the popular supporting arguments for the Big Bang Theory, being those population three stars where we drew it out on the whiteboard. Uh, if you missed last week, take a look at that. But these uh, arguments that we looked at and these stars that we looked at were just hypothesized and have never been observed. So we talked about how it's unreasonable to believe an unsupported argument. So as we go through these videos, you'll kind of see a common theme. You'll see that there is this uh, overlay across the secular scientist community where they try and give their best guess, where they try to explain questions of the universe without God. So there's a lot of information in these videos. And I know some of you are probably thinking that this guy couldn't possibly have all of that stored in his noggin, which is true. So I wanted to take a minute to share with you the material that I use as building blocks for these studies. So these are the answers books. Uh, I myself, I'm not a book person, I will have to admit. I'm a work in progress when it comes to reading. But these don't have to be read from beginning to end. You can pick and choose and jump around and look at different topics and themes that interest you. But these books actually belong in a series uh, that comes from the Answers in Genesis Foundation. So from Ken Ham, the Creation Museum, the Ark Encounter, the people that bring you all that good media and content actually published these books a few years back. The last video, I think I touched partially on two chapters from these books. And then this week I'm looking at probably about two chapters again. But the information that I tell you guys is almost a relay from these books. I take the major themes and ideas, depictions, and in some of the media and pictures that we looked at last week, I put a spin on them and I try and present them to you guys as clearly and concise as I'm able to. But there's actually, so there's five of these books. There's four that are entitled the answers book. So one, this is two, and then there's three and four. And then the fifth book actually uh, confronts questions about Noah's flood and the events that surround it in particular. So that's the newest book, that fifth book in the series. And these books are a great resource. And even though some of these topics can be rather challenging at times, they can be presented very clearly and, you know, novice readers such as myself or people that are not familiar with some of the content are able to walk through them step by step as they present them and, and get the main ideas from them as well. But these guys, these books are available to you guys if you would like to borrow them or look into them. And then all the chapters and media is actually put up on the website at Answers in Genesis, their website. So if you guys need any help uh, navigating that, just feel free to ask. So with that being said, let's get the work this week. For today, we're kind of sort of, uh, we'll leave off or we'll start off where we left off last week, which is we started to get into astronomy, which is the science of stars which seems like a pretty broad topic when we talk about the stars. And even a large one given the amount of stars that are projected to be in our universe, which if you're wondering, it's a lot. There's projected to be over 100 billion stars in the Milky Way alone. So that's our home galaxy, the Milky Way. And then there are projected to be hundreds of billions of galaxies in our universe. So we've got hundreds of billions of stars in our galaxy and then there's hundreds of billions of galaxies in our universe so that number gets pretty long with lots of extra zeros on the end so this massive universe generally raises just as many questions and one that it raised for me and that i've came across countless times even uh, was brought up in one of these books was a question that kind of goes along the lines like this with the universe so big why doesn't the Bible talk about it? Or even, does the Bible talk about the universe? So the short answer to this question is yes, it does. In multiple areas of the, of the Bible, not at length, but they're still there. And then there's a much longer answer that we'll get into. And it's found in our Bible. 
So I mean, it, it's, it's literally found in our Bible from cover to cover, from beginning to end. Our Bible is the story of our universe and our world. It gives us a foundation of understanding how the universe works. And what better way to answer a question about the universe than to look into the creator of the universe? God's word is that. It's divinely inspired. And being that he created it, he will more than likely have the greatest understanding of it. So why not go to him with the questions? So let's take, it, let's take a look at some occurrences where biblical authors take on a universal perspective and or shine a light on it. So first we're going to look in Isaiah 40, verses 21 and 22. I'll read it out here. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. The prophet Isaiah here is astonished. Astonished that his audience can see the amazement of creation, but fail to see it as evidence of a creator. He's dumbfounded. He's calling us out. Look at the first uh, part of that, or verse 21. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? Like four blank calling, out, calling us out questions. You know, the scripture was talking to me back when I was in my high school science class. And he's continuing to talk to everybody who attempts to fit these secular ideas or popular ideas that are against God into their church and their lives. But this passage, Isaiah says some pretty neat things that we're going to look at. The first is how he uses the word circle. So if you look about uh, the beginning or halfway into verse 22, he says, It is he who sits above the circle of the earth. So he uses this word circle. And how he uses it in a way that infers that he knew the earth was round, the circle of the earth. And it's really cool how he does this because it's because he couldn't, at least not on his own, knew that the earth was indeed spherical or a circle. So he had to be writing from God's perspective. And he does it. He says he sits above So God sits above the circle of the earth. So it's easily we see a reference to the earth being spherical in nature. And we see how he couldn't have made sense of that without God. So with God, Isaiah didn't know, but when the Lord spoke through him, he did know. So I thought that was really cool. And then also in Job 26, verse 10, it says this. He drew a circular horizon on the face of the waters. So between these, so the horizon, we think of the horizon as almost like this boundary. And we see how it brings the night, it brings the day. So it's this boundary of light and dark. And then we see how God inscribed. So he drew a circle horizon. God inscribed this circle because he designed a round earth. So we see that from these verses that there indeed was a spherical earth that could be empirically demonstrated. And through history, it's it's, uh, demonstrated by scholars such as Augustine and Thomas Aquinas, which we've heard heard those names before. These theologians that simply just agreed with God in the Bible, and they even state that they believe the earth was round. So we don't need a surplus of biblical text to teach us about creation or astronomy in Isaiah 40, he challenges us to see the surplus in creation. So everywhere we go, we can see the evidence of a creator. And Isaiah points us towards a round earth. But then later on, he also talks about God stretching out the heavens in verse 22. So let's go back to that. He says, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. 
So this is really cool too because he's talking about this expanding universe. He's stretching the heavens, talking about God, which most astronomers today agree to, even though they didn't always think that. And this is funny to me because it wasn't until 1929 by a guy named Edwin Hubble, he was an American astronomer, discovered that the universe was indeed expanding. So he did this through observational science. He found distant galaxies that were moving away from ours, our home galaxy, and other galaxies as well. He saw this observed in science. He saw these galaxies moving away. But for thousands of years prior to this, there was controversy, and it was debated whether the universe was infinite, never-ending, we can never reach the end, or that it was finite and had an end. But scientists could not agree and just went back and forth until they had that hard evidence that observational science in 1929. So this is a very modern discovery for man, but looking at the Bible, we see that the Bible recorded this fact thousands of years ago. The Bible indeed does talk about astronomy and our universe. Isaiah 40 is a good challenge for us to see God's creation in his word, but also evident in our everyday life, the creation of God. So that basically brushes and wraps up what I wanted to talk about when it came to astronomy. Like I said, it's very brief into the content, but it kind of gets the ball rolling for you guys to hopefully spark interest and in these books, talk a lot more about it. And we'll kind of change gears here and we'll start focusing on the ideas of where millions and billions of years come from. And even next week, we'll also uh, tie that more into the earth like we are today. So this will take us into next week as well. So when it comes to the age of the universe and our earth, uh, we learned last week about the Big Bang Theory, stating that the universe is billions of years old. And then it also stated that the Earth and our moon is still billions of years old, so four to five for the age, four to five billion years for the age of the Earth and moon. And real quick, we'll see that through observational science that this is false. And I love, I, I keep using observational science today, but I love it because it's science that's very practical. It's very, uh, you can put your hand on it and you can touch it. It's very uh, truth, but yet almost the scientific community tends to ignore it and just stick to these hypotheses and keep building off of these hypotheses, which is fine. We'll prove them wrong anyways. Uh, we'll look at George Darwin, who happens to be Charles Darwin's son. So probably by accident, George Darwin gave us this tool to prove even more so that the Big Bang Theory is wrong. So he used uh, tidal recession rates and a fission theory that he came up with and he studied this and came up with formulas as to what the age of the moon was. Admitting that this was guesswork, he then used that same number to try and determine the age of the Earth. So he used guesswork to form more guesswork. But he was a renowned physicist and astronomer, and he was later dubbed and given the title as the father of geophysics. So this guy was pretty influential, and even though he admitted to it being guesswork, it still rippled out into the community, and it made a lasting effect even today. So his handiwork in calculating the age of the Earth based on the moon's distance from the Earth led to modern science exploring this idea and the moon's current recession rate. So lots of uh, big phrases there, but his ideas led us today to look at how fast or how much the moon is actually moving away from the earth. And it's actually, it's 1.5 inches every year that the moon slowly moves away from the earth, like uh, George Darwin suggested. But he proves himself wrong in the same manner, and this is fun. So the moon is moving away from the earth by about 1.5 inches every year. So if you did the math, it would mean that in 1.5 billion years, the moon would have been smashed into the earth. So, and science tells us that four to five billion years ago is when the earth and moon were created. But if the moon would have been smashed into the earth 1.5 billion years ago because of the recession rate that is given today, we see that they don't, you can't, it doesn't add up. So we see once again this failed attempt to support a failed idea. So things really are not that complicated until we as people mess it up and make it complicated. So that kind of wraps up today, but let me review just a little bit. So we saw where the Bible takes a look at 
astronomy. We were, ch- we were challenged by uh, the prophet Isaiah to live in God's creation every day, to see that evidence in our lives every day, and not only just to look for it in the scriptures, which it's there, it's just not a surplus because the surplus is all around us. And he wrote amazingly about a round earth that he could have never have been able to tangibly know in an about an expanding universe in uh, chapter 40 verses 20s 20 through 22 he wrote about that and then we saw that it was confirmed thousands of years later and once more we see where millions and billions of years doesn't add up when we put it to the test actually it was their own test that they came up with so they just proved themselves wrong which is the problem when you try and do this guesswork it just ends up crumbling inevitably anyways so last week i left you off with a verse i'm going to leave you off with another verse today it goes right along with the mission it actually came up on my uh verse of the day this morning and it just god just set it out there for me to share it with you guys and it's first peter three fifteen. but in your hearts revere christ as lord Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have, but do this with gentleness and respect. These topics are important to be aware of because they are creeping into our everyday lives. And so I got a story for you guys. It's too good not to share. When I wrapped up last week for the Digging Deeper, uh, Clarissa, my wife, she's the G Kids director here, is in school. She's finishing out her psychology degree in child development. So she just started this new class uh, last week and shared uh, what happened with me right after I finished. But her book, she started reading in her book, and it's almost in the first two sentences she said, this is what it said. It says, and listen close because it's really, uh, it's really funny. It says, although human life appeared on earth some three million or more years ago, Written records extend back only a few thousand years. And she read that to me, and I was like, well, duh. So you guys ad- admit that we only have written records for 3,000 years, but we're going to speculate that we believe in millions and billions of years? Oh, it just blows my mind that people use one idea and then just misconstrue it to a different idea, and it's just... Oh, it's, I had a good laugh about it for your, I would share that with you guys. But it, it's crazy that we have to accept facts and then speculate from those same facts. But that's why we are here to learn so we can engage in our communities and have those mature conversations. Just like 1 Peter 3.15 says, like we have to be prepared to give answers when they come, when we're uh, presented with questions. And to engage in other people in other people's lives and just do it maturely and with respect and grace. So thanks. That's all I got for you guys today. Uh, thanks for tuning in. If you would like to borrow these books, like I said, those are available to you. Don't uh, don't be afraid to ask for those. They're online as well. And then if you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know. Thanks.